Hey, this is Dana with the Freedom Police Channel and EssenceOfMe.com. I am doing chores um, for the holidays and I was answering comments from my last lock update and I wanted to kind of um, address a couple of things in the comments that I wanted to place in video because I am appreciating how um, my updates are helping other women with fine hair. Um, there are some things that I've seen more than once, though, that I'd love to kind of capture on video. So if you're interested in hearing some more, I will not. Right now, uh, my hair is wrapped up. I'll show you all what I got going on. I won't be taking my wrap down, but I will be just addressing some just general things. Um, and I always think it's helpful for anybody interested in locks or even maintaining their locks. Uh, some of the things I will address in this video will be the tools that I use to do my retie. I will show you specifically. I will also show you the shampoo that I am using now as well as the conditioner. Um, and I'm going to also share with you uh, the products that I use for my edges uh, because I get that question asked a lot. And y'all, let me just go ahead and tell you before we go to the introduction, thumbs up the video, leave comments because when you leave comments and questions, then that means I update more often, hopefully. Um, also... Know that some of this stuff, like when you're talking about edges and all that other stuff, when everybody have an opinion about edges, thin hair problem areas, it is a touchy situation and a touchy topic. At least I believe it can be because there's a lot of stigma that comes around it. So I'm going to tell you what I do, but no, y'all, y'all got to do the girlfriend code, okay? Y'all can't be putting my business all out in the street. Anyway. If you're interested in seeing what I have to say, well, then stick around. I will see you all after the introduction. If not, don't forget to give this a thumbs up, and I will see you all hopefully sooner than later. Let's get through the introduction, and then I'll show you everything else on the other side. I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so this is Dana with the Freedom Please channel and EssenceOfMe.com. Yes, I'm coming to you from my room. I'm listening to my laundry. I'm getting it done. Thanksgiving's around the corner. Your girl got a multitask. <laughs> and I saw the comments and I wanted to come on and make this video. Since I'm deciding to dive into the deep end here, I'm going to, I literally have pretty much every single thing that I use on a regular basis. Um, and maybe one, like one thing I haven't done used yet, but I was like, since I'm doing this, I might as well just bring everything. So where do I want to start? I'm going to start, I'll go to the comments last because it wasn't any specific questions. I just want to make sure I don't forget anything. Okay. So I'm going to start with, um, what I use on my edges because I do know that that has been asked so many times and I could do a better job of this. I don't do a great job of it, but what I do is working. So I know that if I did it more often, it probably would be even better, but it's what else. So what I use is I use 100% um, pure rosemary oil. You can use any part of my nails. I took off the acrylics and y'all, I promise you, I, I'm staying away from things. Um, 100% rosemary oil, and I use ORS um, fertilizing temple balm. Now, how I do this is um, what I I I my thin 
spots on both sides are kind of like a C area. So what I do is I make sure my hair is pulled back. And then in that area, I first just take literally just a brushing of the balm. Literally a brushing. And, and I take it and I rub it in the area, massaging it real good. What I make sure that I do is I try my best not to get it on the base of the locks that are around the area, but really on the area that is smooth because I do have smooth spots, still a smooth spot on both sides still there, but it's not like it used to be. And once I rub that in, I do it on both sides. Then what I do is I put a drop on my finger literally. And I honestly, because if you put a drop, it's going to roll off the side of your finger. So what I do is I do the drop and I kind of just like, do like this so that it won't go everywhere and the residual that's left on my finger i massage it in to the area and i just do it really really good and i do that on both sides one of the things that i can tell you as a tip when it comes to having um thin sides if you do have a little bit of hair in the surrounding areas okay y'all this really is a tip so I, okay we, we gotta be we gotta be people here okay is that when you retie your hair do not grab and do not aim to grab every little single hair that's around that section if you leave some of the little hairs out around that section it will help you to whether you want to say mask um, I don't think for me it does not cover but it does just make it so that it's just not a smooth clear area especially as my hair grows out um in the past what happened is once my hair grows out you won't necessarily see it because i can always pull my hair behind my ear and it will cover that section i'm just not at that length yet and it probably um won't be there until maybe like probably the end of my second year, early third year, will it cover the area? So in the meantime, or when I'm doing a bun or something like that, that's what you do. You just leave the surrounding hairs there. And what I do then, oh, and I do this, honestly, I should do it two to three times a week. I maybe do it once or twice a week on a good week, but it depends on how busy I am and... It's just what it is. So then what I do is after I do that, and if I'm wearing the style where it, it will be out and it will show, what I will do is I will take a tiny bit of gel and I just use equal styler gel just because that's typically the gel that's in the house. I have a daughter and literally the gel that I have lasts forever because I literally like do not even a dollop. It's literally like just enough to moisturize the tip of my finger because the area is not big. Then what I do is I take my finger and I kind of just rub it through like this. And then this may sound crazy. What I do then is I take my finger and I do like little circles. Circle, 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 circle. Because, all right, it's natural hair and it's curly hair. And so I circle, circle, circle. Once I circle and it's kind of like, it almost is like not a teasing, but it's like just getting the curls in those sections and a little bit of hair just kind of um, just curled essentially. Then what I do is I take my fingers and I pat it. You basically want those little curls to be little C curls and then you just pat the hair in place. And what that little bit of hair does is will cover a little bit where you don't have hair. If you have more hair in those areas than what I have, then that will be even better, right? Um, or even if you have a little fuzz in there with a little bit of curls around or a little bit of hair around it. That's another reason why if you have um, hair around it and it's a little bit longer, I wouldn't cut it down. I would use it, it may sound bad, like a covering, right? And so I pat it in place. Once I pat it in place, then I use this, which is the um, Passion Fruit Curl Control Paste. Again, using so, when I say little on all this stuff, I literally mean like, you won't even be able to see it. Do you see that? It's enough just to kind of just wet your finger. Then what I do is I take it and I pat it 
across the area because remember we pat the curl yeah i pat the curls down the little curls that are there and then what i do is i tie it down until all of that dries once it dries um once it dries it's not gonna be laid to the gods snatched baby hair <laughs> I, it's, it's just gonna look presentable and that's what you want like <laughs> Or at least that's what I want. Then what I do is once it's dry and everything, then what I do is I will take a little bit more just like I did before. And I will literally kind of lay the perimeters with a light brushing because what it then does is it establishes like the hairline. I don't put a lot because you don't want it slick. You don't want it shiny. You don't want it straight. If it's fine and you use something like this, it can tend to make thin hair look sh like you have relaxed edges because our hair is thin and this is thick. But you want something with this type of texture because you don't need a lot and you need the hairs that are there to stay put, right? Stay put. So when I do that, it literally will just kind of establish the edge. That's why if you ever go back and you look at when I had my fro hawk, my my edges were the same or they were a little bit lighter than they are right now. But you can't tell. But that's because I controlled the area around it. And I know how to work with my edges because they've been this way since I was like seven years old. Okay. Now, the last itty bitty trick because we girls, is eyeshadow. I've told people this in comments. I've been doing this for years. And you get a, you get a, um, this brush honestly is the best brush that I've had ever to do this with and I think it's because the fibers that they use on this brush it's an essential essence of beauty brush I'm almost 99% certain I got it from Target in like a set um, and it's the limited edition eyeshadow and contour I never use this for I actually had it to use for eyeshadow and but I never used it once I realized that it worked perfectly on my edges this is the only that's the only thing I use this brush for. And what you do is you take the brush and you put it in the eyeshadow, not a whole bunch, and you rub it in where, for me, I rub it in where there is no hair. And I bright, so basically the whole section, I lightly brush it in all over the section. And when I do it, I do it in light little C motions, just like when I use the gel. Now, what will happen, and I do it in that order, is that the, the, the eyeshadow will uh, kind of hold on to the gel. And for me, I really think it's the control paste versus the eco because I don't use enough of it, but this is a thicker. But the items together come together to where you just have a nice put together. When I say that my situation is situated, this is the situation that makes it happen, okay? This is just a black eyeshadow. It looks all crazy because it's, it's old. It's the only thing I use it for. I don't use it for anything else. Um... I personally like black and um this is a rev um this is a Revlon black eyeshadow. Um uh, I take that back. A L'Oreal. Um it's a Lori L'Oreal Lush Raven is what the color is. Um but I I use that and you don't do too much and if you do it like this, for me, this will last two to three days because I wear a satin bonnet at night. And if I do it, I don't do it all the time because like this time of year, again, I mostly keep my hair wrapped up. Um, And so that's what I do for the edges. What this means is that number one, if you do something like this, you need to ensure that you don't get near the base of your locks. Um, for me, I'm fortunate that it's not in the 
it's not in the middle of anything. It's, you know, it's on the outer edge of my hairline. So I can do this without um, having products touch the base or touch my locks. Um, the other thing it means is that I need to be, whenever I do my um, shampoo, like when I do, when I wash my hair and everything, my first step is always an apple with um, apple cider vinegar. And what I do is I spray directly on those sections and I rub it really good with my fingers. And essentially the apple cider vinegar is stripping any product residue or anything from those areas. And then I make sure I do it again when I you know, when I shampoo and all that stuff to make sure that I'm getting everything that could be there hopefully away and as best as I can. So let me know if you have any questions about that. Um, this is something that I have done for years and I literally haven't changed anything um, other than the the most recent change to the whole lineup has been when I added this, but this again was years ago. And let me tell you something. This, this is so old. I'm not even going to tell you how old this is, but it's because I literally use so little of it. And if this amount is gone because my daughter has used it and all this stuff too. You use so little of it, but I mean, you could probably use more if you have more hair to make it look even better. I just like for it to look not basically in where the areas are smooth it is the color of my skin tone versus being brown or dark brown or black like my hair and I just want the smooth areas to blend in with the not smooth areas you know with the fine hair that's there so that's what I do I told all my business y'all need to love me for life so um, speaking of shampoo and conditioner, um, I showed this before, which is the Mix Easy. This company sent me the shampoo, um, as well as some other products to, um, try. And I really like the shampoo. The only thing I don't like is I don't like the, the apple, um, the spout on this. I wish it was a pump, but I love the texture. I love the smell and I just wish it was as thick as their um facial cleanser if because because i like the thickness but um because it's just easier for you to know where you're putting it and where you're not um but i i have been using this since i got the got it in august or september um before then i was using the um Sister Lock Shampoo, because I still had some left over, mixed with the VO5 Clarifying, and I used to alternate those, always using apple cider vinegar on every time I wash my hair. Now, I've done this in place of the Sister Lock Shampoo, um, and I no longer dilute it. And what I've added in new to the rotation is the Black Vanilla Carol's Daughter Shampoo and um, it's so a free shampoo. Um, I, I bought this um, after seeing um, Halise. Uh, I love her videos. She did a video of like what her routine was and some of the things that she said about this shampoo I really was intrigued by um, primarily because number one I love this about I love the smell I always have but I've never bought Carol's Daughter shampoo. I always felt like their products were so expensive being that I was buying products for myself. I was buying products for my daughter and because her hair is very very thick we go through products fast and so um so whenever it came to um deciding on what to buy with mine because i could pretty much use just about anything i kind of found what worked for me and i stuck to it um and i i always um i kind of for the most part towards the end stuck to diva care products just because i like them even though they were pricey they last me a long time because i never had to use a whole bunch of it and I'm saying all of that to say I kind of took that same mentality when it came to purchasing the Carol's Daughter set. Now, it is a little, I still think it's pricey, but you don't, um, you know, at this stage, I don't wash my hair every week. And this time of year, I don't wash my hair every week. And I don't just use this. I would rotate. So I'm pretty sure this will last me a long time. And when you think about the price spread over the number of months that you will have it, three probably even a little bit longer than that because I've already used it 
and you can barely tell. And I do um, two to three shampoos um, in my hair and it's still, and it's, I love the texture. Um, I love the pump. The smell is amazing. Um, and so, yeah, I bought it from Target. Yeah, because my Target by me has all the black hair care products. It's, it's the bomb. So um, and another reason why I purchased this was because I wanted the leave-in conditioner. Um, I wanted to, uh, the way that I went into buying the shampoo and conditioner that I would use on my hair now is I wanted um, before I have to back up before I started my locks, I pretty much adhered to, I can't think of the method right now, but essentially it was that you use all water soluble, soluble products. And I wanted to do the same thing with my locks to help ward off any issues with potentially with buildup. I didn't have any issues with buildup before, but even before I never really was a big product user on my other locks. So um, that was another reason why I bought this set. Um, and so having the leave in conditioner, I wanted this because again, I am wrapping my hair the majority of the time. Um, and so um, I wanted to have the leave-in conditioner because I do moisturize my locks not every single day, but I moisturize them. I put oil and I wanted something that would be water soluble so I could wash it out and go on about my merry way. The last thing that I purchased um, from the same set was the pure hair oil. And I only use it on my, um, like I massage it on, on my scalp uh, because I do, again, get dry because of the wrapping. Oh, and um, I showed this before, but I use, this is my regular misting bottle. Um, I do still have my um, water, essential oils, aloe vera juice in here. Um, I use, this is probably the most regular item that I use besides water. I have one of these that is plain water, and in it I use distilled water. And then in this I have all the other stuff, and I use those every day tea tree, rosemary, peppermint, um, the aloe vera juice, um, and jojoba oil, vitamin E oil. The very last thing, which I know I've showed before, but I was asked again, and that is my tools uh, that I use for doing my retie. I do retie my own hair. I've been retightening my own hair since I think I was six months um, starting my sister locks. No, I'm not a certified sister lock consultant. So um, there are three. There are three things that I use primarily. I have a bunch of tools. Okay, uh, uh, the one that I use the most, which is very interesting to me, is the one that I have for my first set of locks. But I've purchased these others. So. The, the tools that I use primarily are the nappy lock tool. And here they are. And because my locks are getting longer, I really don't have to use those as much. I use a latch hook. Um, this is the one that you normally would find in your beauty supply store will look like this. And I'm going to bring them closer. I know I've showed these before. This is the one that you would normally get in the beauty supply store. This is the one that I purchased online. Oh, here we go. See the difference? This is much smaller. And this one works a lot better with sister locks because your locks are small and the base is small. But um, I do use these. This was like a dollar and something. Um... I bought this smaller one on Sam's Beauty and actually when I bought it, it was buy one, get one free. So I got two for like a $1.50 or whatever after tax. The tool, these tools on the Snappy Lock site, I believe there may be $20 or something like that. Of my locks thickening. Yes, my locks are thickening up. One of the things that um, I tell people when I see them in person when they ask about my sister locks because people realize that they're sister locks and that makes me so super happy. But I tell them, I believe that if more black women knew how um, 
how freeing and low maintenance that locks are. I believe more black women would have locks and not just sister locks. I just mean locks in general as in the method and the primary way of caring for your um, Af African Afro textured kinky hair. I just think we would. Um, um, uh, something else that has been brought up is swimming. Swimming when it comes to locks. I honestly believe that they go hand in hand um, because locks really, if you have a coarser texture hair, even though I did and mine was a softer, I still believe that is true um, because our hair curls. And so when it curls, when it gets wet, I think the more that you get your hair wet, the faster your hair will lock. And the reason why I believe that is because my first set of locks locked a lot faster than these set of locks. And I believe because my hair is softer that you, I would have thought that the smaller locks would have locked faster on my hair. Um, but my other locks, I wash them jokers from day one and I used to wet my hair three, four, five days a week. I used to swim three to four days a week. I used to, just because I felt like it, just sit under the shower head. Like, and with sister locks, I feel like because in the beginning, I was already breaking so many rules. That was one rule that I was trying to like adhere by, which is, you know, kind of taking it easy in the beginning. But I believe that if I would have, um, I would have, washed them more frequently in the earlier stages that it would have locked sooner. So now I do sh um, shampoo and wash my hair a little more frequently. Um, now because of chlorine and things like that, the only difference that I um, and personally, it, uh, I personally plan to make is that I would wear a swim cap, even though swim caps really don't work with me, work for my hair. My hair is very smooth. Um, again, I think it's just a characteristic of having fine hair. So therefore swimming caps used to always fall off. But what I always did is I treated my hair before I put it on and usually it would stay on long enough so that my hair wasn't totally wet in the chlorine the entire time. So in the end it worked. Um, also I did always wet my hair, add conditioner, do those things to kind of Feel the sponge of the hair, if, if you will, um, before getting in the water. Here's the last things that I would say when it comes to the lock experience and sister locks in general. Do I think sister locks are like the only way to go? No, I do not. Um, I had my first set of locks and I did those myself. And um, the only reason why, again, that I went with sister locks this time is because I wanted them sized a particular size in a particular way. And I just felt like it would have been easier for me having someone else that could see my head do them instead of doing what I did the first time, which I'm going to tell you in a second. And I tell you, I'm going to tell you that because everybody is not in the position to to spend the money that comes with sister locks and i understand that but i don't think that sister locks are the only way that you can have small locks because my first set of locks were technically small locks and i did them myself with the nappy lock tool from the jump if it's that you want to have locks and you don't know about the pricing of it you know you there are braid locks there are people that start locks with two strand twists um i started my first set of locks with the nappy lock tool from the beginning it was time consuming. I believe my first set of locks for me to put them in, it took me like 27 hours. But one of the things that I did that I feel like was a shortcut is I went to a beautician that was a natural hair beautician and I got comb coils. Um, the only downside to that is, is, you know, making sure they don't use a whole bunch of products. So I got comb coils and what that did is that made it so that the person so that there were neat parts, okay? 
And then what I did is when I went home, I took each one of those comb coils and I broke them down to either two or four locks per comb coil. And I can't remember what the number is because again, it's been a long time, but that's what I did to help me with the process. And so that gave me smaller locks, but it I did it on my own terms. And what I did is I, I sat down and did them nonstop because I just carved out the time to do it. But if you had to do it on your own, you could just slowly work your way from the back to the front. You could wear a wig, you can wear a head wrap, you can wear a hat to cover your hair as you go through the process. Another thing that you could do is you could do braid locks. You could do the same type of thing and then just plait every, you know, everywhere where you have a comb coil or break them down to two or break them down to three and do them in individual plaits. I personally would not do those just because of the amount of time that it takes for the braiding pattern to um, blend in with the locks. Uh, but one thing that I always liked about nappy locks is the fact of the way that I, you maintain them is the same way that you start them. So the texture throughout your locks are the same except for the difference between new growth and the locked area. The last one is two, two strand twists. Um, if I thought there was a option one, option two, option three, two strand twists will probably be up there. Like my number one would be something like starting with interlocking from the jump. Two would probably be two strand twists and then three would be braid locks if I were to have done them over or if someone were to ask my recommendation. But all of those really at the most would just require the cost of getting the cone coils or you can just do the parting yourself. But again, I wanted to be able to have a half up, half down or whatever and have a clean part um, wherever I put it. And so that was one of the reasons why before that's the way that I did it. And then the reason why I went with the option that I went with it this time. Um, the last part too is when you do the nappy lock method from the beginning or two strand twist, you can keep, um, you can start with longer hair. And um, I think that's just easier when it comes to having styling options from the beginning. I totally forgot to show my head wrap, so I'm going to turn to the side. And I'm going to try to turn to the back. I got all this stuff around to me. This is a head wrap that I purchased on eBay. It is a granulated um, head wrap going from navy blue to a light teal on the other end. And it's mostly blue and very little teal. And I love wrapping it like this. So that is my head wrap. If you have comments, questions, or concerns, leave them in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk with you all hopefully sooner than later. Take care and goodbye. Don't matter where I go